Hey, Ben. Hey, Jared. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you? Did you hear that there's going to be a hurricane in Hawaii? Hurricanes can hit Hawaii. They're in the Atlantic, not the Pacific. Well, they're in the Pacific, not the Atlantic, but, which sounds like you need Google to search, but, yes, they absolutely can have hurricanes in the Pacific. I don't believe you. I'm going to look it up. You don't even know that Hawaii's in the Pacific. What are you going to look up? I'm going to Google it. You know what? That's such a waste of time. You're going to get millions of hits. The first one's going to be Wikipedia. The next one's going to be an advertisement for some hurricane. And then what? Okay, do you know a better way to search? Uh, as a matter of fact, I do. Okay, show me. Okay. So as I was explaining to Ben, when you're using a Google search, there really is a pretty significant learning curve when it comes to being able to filter down and, and really get the resources that we're looking for. So when I search for plate tectonics, you'll see that the very first hit is Wikipedia because that's probably most um, often used. However, if I go to the search tools, you'll see that if I click all results, I can also search by reading level. Notice that there's actually 78% of the hits that are related specifically to advanced reading levels. So when I click on that, you'll notice that it filters down. So I'm really not getting the, the uh, articles or the, the um, entries that may not have been as higher order as what I would have liked. The other things that I can do is use some of the tools that are available in Google. And if I go to more and then even more, what you'll see is there's a whole plethora of web search tools that are here, as well as, if I scroll down, what you'll see is that there's a whole section of specialized search. What I like about the specialized search is it allows me to use um, Google's powerful searching engine to only use certain sites when actually searching. So if I already have a bunch of sites that I would like to be able to um, have my students use, I'm able to go through here, add the separate sites one at a time, and it will allow me to be able to specifically detail the exact resources that I want my students to use, which is really nice. And you saw there it saves your list so that you can actually go back and visit them later. The other nice thing is that it search, um, allows you to search trends. So if I want to look at plate tectonics in a trend pattern, what you'll notice here is that it shows me over time, you'll notice going back to about 2004, the inception of Google, over time you can see the cyclical pattern of how really plate tectonics is searched. Maybe it's that's the time of school year when uh, certain school districts get to that. Maybe it's because of natural events or phenomena. Wouldn't it be interesting to see or try and have our students figure out what perhaps that trend is being derived from? So maybe what I'll do is I'll search for earthquakes as well. And what you'll notice is that if I search for earthquakes, well, okay, I see somewhat of a cyclical pattern, but wouldn't it be great if I could have searched earthquakes and plate tectonics simultaneously? Well, you can. If I click Add, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually type in plate tectonics and you'll notice that I can see that pattern. Now obviously earthquakes are searched a lot more, but you may see, you notice here that there is somewhat of a cyclical pattern that perhaps matches and now you can have some students, your students conduct some higher order exercises or thinking to be able to maybe make a, a case or, or um, a hypothesis of why that may be. So if I take a look at other options that are available, one of the other things that I know students are often I'm looking for is data. And so when I go to fusion tables, what you'll see here is that I can actually go in and take a look at the actual public data that Google has in its normal tables. So if I go to Google tables and I search for plate tectonics, again, sticking with that same theme, what you'll see is that I have all kinds of data here, six rows, three columns, three rows, four columns, 33 rows, five columns, where students can actually use real life current data that's actually out there on Google. So hopefully this gave you a little bit of a, an idea of how Google can be used for more than just a search. Now to wrap up while we're back here, one of the last tools that uh, I want to show you that's not under even more is you may have noticed that one of the places that we were seeing a lot of resources was the, the EDU sites or the higher ed. Another place that we certainly know would be good would be .gov. Well, I'm not sure if you knew this, but if you type in site colon and any website or web extension that you'd like, you can force Google to search based just on that extension. So I'm going to type in site.gov. When I do that, you'll notice that every single search result ends in .gov, meaning I'm getting things that are coming from probably the U.S. Geological Survey. If I did .edu, you're seeing that I'm getting higher ed. 
probably in California, Colorado, where they see high activity with the plate tectonics that are there. So this gives you a, a more, more of an analog way, if there is such a thing in Google, of actually manually crafting where your custom site search goes to. But I wanted to make sure to at least share that with you so you knew that you didn't have to go to more, even more, to set up really um, explicit custom searches for your students. So um, hopefully this helps you out, and uh, we'll take it back to uh, Ben and Jared. See, I told you you can use Google much more powerfully. Thanks a lot. So what did we learn? We learned that hurricanes can be in the Pacific. Yeah, and we did also learn that Hawaii's in there with them. Okay. All right. Very good. So so we learned how to do site search, and we learned how to do um, Google, Google trends. trends. Google Trends. Right. So uh, what if I want to learn about more? Well, I tell you what. If you take a look at our article this month, what you'll be able to see is that there's a whole bunch of different ways that we can uh, tap into Google and some of the more features that you'll find in it. And if our article doesn't help you enough to figure out the nuts and bolts of how to make it work, Google it. <laughs>